and today I'm going to be showing you another awesome card trick and tutorial. This is actually a really cool one. It is a triumph based routine. If you do not know what a triumph based routine is, I will get more into that during the tutorial. But I do want to give you a quick overview and performance of the trick first. So, as always, let's get into a pretty cool performance. Alright, so now we're going to start off here. Now, we don't need to use all the cards for this trick. We only need to use maybe about half. So, I'm just going to riffle down the deck, and whenever the spectator says stops, I'm going to lift up that portion of cards. We'll use that portion and set the rest of the cards off to the side. Sounds simple enough? Alright. So, just say stop whenever you like. Stop right there. Alright, perfect. So, we'll use this portion and set the other portion off to the side. We're not going to need it. We're only going to use this portion of cards. Now, at this point, I would take the cards and hand the deck to the spectator. Now, the spectator is going to put their cards behind their back, okay? Now, obviously, I do not have a spectator with me, so I'm going to play the part of the spectator. So, the cards are going behind my back. Now, guys, you guys have to believe me here. I really am not cheating. The cards are behind my back. Now, you're going to tell the spectator to do, to do a series of moves. You're going to tell them to just take, push off the top two cards, flip them over, and then give the cards one cut. Okay, now they can do this again. Take the top two cards, flip them over, and then give the deck a cut. Now, the spectator can do this as much as they want. They can just take the top two cards, flip them over, and then give the cards a cut. It is really up to them. It is a free amount. They could sit here for an hour if they really wanted to of just flipping over the top two cards and then giving the cards a cut. So the spectators going to do this, and again, I really am doing this behind my back. I am not cheating. So the spectators do that. Let's say they're, let's just say they stop doing it now, and they've had their fair share. Now, when they're done, I'm going to turn around, and now I'm going to bring the cards back on screen. Okay. Now, even though the cards are on screen. I am actually looking away right now because in the real performance I would be looking away, so I am looking away from the screen. So I'm going to tell the spectator to just look at the top card. And if it's face down, I'm just going to tell them to flip it face up. If it's face up, I'm going to tell them to flip it face down. So, and I also want them to remember the card. So, again, I'm not looking at the card whatsoever. My eyes are closed. So, if it's face down, they're going to flip it over and memorize obviously whatever card they see. If it's face up, then they'll remember the card and then flip it face down. So there, I flipped it. Or make sure you remember that top card. And then I'll tell them to give the cards a cut. So now I can look now. So I honestly have no idea what the card is at this point. I really do not know and I do not know anything that happened. So now they're going to hand the cards to me. And I'm going to put the cards behind my back this time. And again, the cards really are behind my back. And now what's going to happen is here is even though I'm doing this all behind my back, I am actually going to try my best to sort through all of the cards. And even though I'm not looking at the cards whatsoever, I am just going through the cards and seeing if I can find your selection even without looking at them. Now, I know that seems next to impossible, but trust me, I can make this happen. Okay, I think I've done it. Okay, I'm going to bring the cards back from behind my back. And now, I think I, th I should have successfully done this. I'm going to take the cards. I'm going to spread them out across the table. And you'll notice that after I went through all the cards, and keep in mind this still was behind my back, I was able to only get one card face down. And it should be your selection, the three of clubs. So anyways, guys, that is the trick. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So now let's get straight into the tutorial. All right, guys, hopefully you stuck around for the tutorial. So this is a really, really good one. Most spectators cannot make sense of how you pull off this trick, but it's actually a lot simpler than it seems. So let's get into this tutorial. Now, as I mentioned in the performance, um, this is a triumph routine. If you do not know what a triumph routine, I'll explain it now. A triumph routine, as far as card magic goes, is basically a card routine where... A spectator memorizes or picks a certain card, and then their card is is going to be the only one face up or face down within the deck. So that's basically what a triumph routine is. There's many different versions. This one is known as the behind the back or the blind triumph, as the uh, title says. So let's just get into how to do this. 
So there is a setup to the deck. You do want to remove 20 cards, so let's do that now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 cards. Set the rest of the cards all to the side for now. Don't even worry about them. Now, as of right now, all the cards are, of course, face down. But what you want these cards to be, here's the setup. You want them to alternate face up, face down, face up, face down, face up, face down, and so on. So you're going to start doing this now. Place the first card face up. Make sure the first card is face up. That's really important. So face up, then face down, then face up, then face down, then face up, then face down. Then just keep going on like this until you've set all the cards. So just like that, boom. And the way you'll know if you did it right is if both sides are face down cards. If the first card you put down is face down, then both ends are going to end up being face up and you don't want that. You want both ends to be face down as shown here. So now, of course, you have all the cards alternating face up, face down, face up, face down. And that's exactly what you want. Now, again, the spectator does not know this. So just be careful when you're handling the cards not to flash that. So now you're going to come back to the rest of the deck. And then you're going to take this and now you're going to hold a break. So, you're, so you have a slight pinky break between the rest of the deck and your 20 preset cards. So now you'll take the deck and you'll be like, alright, yo, I got a card deck I want to show you. So you come in with the deck and you say, okay. Now, most tricks, um, we use basically the whole deck, but we're not going to be using the whole deck today. We're only going to be using a, por a small portion, maybe about half the cards. Because 20 cards is almost half, so you'll say about half. And you're going to riffle down the side of the deck and what... They can say stop whenever they really want. It's truly a free choice. Now, when they say stop, you're not really lifting the deck up where they say stop. You're, let's say they say stop here. You're going to close the deck, and then you're going to lift up from that pinky break. So, obviously, you're only lifting up those 20 cards. So, let's riffle down. They say stop, close, and then lift up the 20 cards. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's kind of like a riffle for us. Take the bottom half and set it off to the side. It is not relevant for this trick whatsoever. So now the only cards in your hands are, of course, your 20 preset cards, face up, face down, face up. Now, again, just be careful not to flash that, because obviously the spectator's going to know something's up. Now, you're going to hand the cards to the spectator, and the spectators are going to put the cards behind their back. Now, obviously, for the tutorial, I'm going to keep it on camera just so you can see what's actually going on here. But reality, what I'm showing you is really behind the spectator's back. So, the cards are behind their back. Now, here's what the spectator's doing. You're going to tell them to take the top two cards, tell them to push over the top two cards, and just flip them over. And then give the cards one cut. Now, notice, like I said in the performance, they can do this as many times as they want, because it does not change the order of the deck. The deck will still be face up, face down. Here's the reason. So look, we have face down, face up, obviously, right? If you flip over the top two cards, it's still face down, face up. Nothing changes. And if you just get the cards, it'll change where the cards are, but it does not change the face-up, face-down order. Everything is still the same. And don't worry, let's say they cut to a face-up card, right? Everything will still be the same, because take a look. It'll be face-up, face-down. If you flip over the top two cards, it's still face-up, face-down order. Just give the cards a cut, and then you will be fine. They can do this as many times as they want, but the deck will always stay the same. It does not matter how many times you can keep going on like this. They can do it for three seconds or three hours. It doesn't matter. The order will not change. So I think I've emphasized that enough. Let's move on to this next portion of the trick. So now, when they are done, so now this was happening behind the back, and now they bring the cards back in front. And at this point, you're turned around because you don't want to see the top card. So now, at this point, the spectator's looking at the cards. They'll say, okay, you're going to tell them, okay, to flip over... If the card on the top is face down, tell them to flip it face up and memorize the card that they see. If the card is face up, just tell them to flip it face down, but make sure they memorize the card. So either way, they're basically memorizing the top card and flipping it over. So, in this case, the card they're looking at is face down, so they're going to turn it face up. And again, this face up card here is not suspicious to them because, remember, they were cutting the cards and they were also flipping over cards. So if they see a face up card, they're not going to be suspicious at all because obviously that looks normal to them. So they're memorizing the three of diamonds. Now what happens when they flip over the card that will disturb the order in a way. All the cards will be in the face up, face down order except for the top two. Now it's face up, face up or face down, face down depending on 
the order, or depending on how the cards landed at the end. And then tell them to just cut the cards in the middle, just like this. So now, again, what this does is you got face down, face up, face down, face up. The cards are still in the same order, except there are there are cards that are misplaced. This one area, it's just a bunch of face-up cards. That's what that does to the deck. And this is important now. Now, you're going to take the cards from them and put the cards behind your back. But again, now I'm going to bring the cards in front just so you guys can see the exposed view of what's going on. And now what I'm showing you is what's going to actually be going on behind my back. You're going to say, okay, I'm going to try to feel for the cards and see if I can get it. Now, this part may take some practice. All you're doing is in-jogging and out-jogging the cards. You're starting with an in-jog and then going with an out-jog. Now, the only practice is, is doing, actually doing this movement behind your back. Maybe a little odd, so just practice this little movement before you do it to your spectator. But, okay, so in reality, what I'm doing is I'm in-jogging and out-jogging cards behind my back. And you'll notice all the face-down cards are going in one group, and all the face-up cards are going in another group. Now... Again, this Three of Diamonds was the one they memorized. It was Disturbed, so normally this would be a face-down card. But since they flipped it up, it's a face-up card. So this one goes to the in-jog. Now notice that was the only face-up card to go in the face-down section. And then if you carry out the rest of the cards, everything is still normal. So all the face-up cards are in one group, and all the face-down cards are in another group. Except the face-down group right here happens to have one face-up card there, Selection. Now what you're going to do is from here, again, this is still going on behind my back. You're just going to peel out all of the out-jogged cards and flip them over. And then bring the deck around. So now the trick is over from here and it leaves you with one of two scenarios. Either all the cards are going to be face down and their selection is going to be the only one face up. Or all the cards will be face up and their selection will be the only one face down. So yeah, anyways guys... That is the trick. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure to leave a comment below, like this video, and of course subscribe to the channel. We still only have 78 subscribers. Please guys, help me reach 100 subscribers. That is my first goal, and my goals will get bigger from there. If you want to know more about my subscriber account goals, you can check the About section on my channel. And I'd also be very appreciatory if we can hit that 80 subscriber goal by the end of this week. So we just need two people, just two people to hit that subscribe button. So come on, guys, pull through for me. But yeah, um, again, just let me know your thoughts, what you think about this trick. And yeah, I will definitely see you guys in the next video, so make sure you stay tuned. When it comes to magic, follow your dreams. Cartrix 8 signing off. Peace out.